Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'll try and keep this as informal as possible. This is quite, you know, I've got a small group, so we keep it just like friendly and not with like, open questions or whatever you want to do. Um, so I don't really know. Like I think if we open, if we open up with like a few questions, if you've got anything in particular you want to know about the event itself, and then that might open up to other things, other stories I can tell about. Um, about the year, all the build up to it. Can I ask you where you're from? Commander, Fleshley? Fleshley, yeah. Okay, got that. Road from there. Did, were you with the Vinya? Yeah. yeah. I thought so, only because I happened to do this for the team here and you drifted past me about five times as fast as I was going. Yeah. I don't think you can show it off, but um, <laughs> no. on that flat bit on the bottom, and this is, that was five years ago. There's a long time ago, we haven't yeah. run one since. Um, no, that's but, right. But we should. But, so you, sorry, yeah. so you started cycling as a eight year old, 10 year old, 12 year old? Uh, 14, 15. Um, We've been, yeah? We've been, yeah. And then it turned out to be still quite good and it sort of progressed from there. But yeah, the, 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 the simplest way of putting it is I started with the Cycling Club and then um, I, I, I was really nervous about racing. I finally dipped my toe into racing with time trialing. So, yeah. And then uh, when I did, did start road racing, I was in my second year as a junior. Um, focused on nothing but the junior tour Wales, because uh, that was like the biggest race for a junior to, to do. Yeah. Did that, finished third, and then signed for uh, what was then Rafa's on the journey. Uh, that was kind of the reason I asked, my dad is from Ashley, man, he's 93. Well, how's the process work for like, getting signed? Like, no one did. Do you just stay on just got signed to a team? But, like, do they approach you? Do you approach them? Do you like, how does that work? Yeah, there's a bit of both in that. Um, and it's more, the more proactive you are, the easier it is. Uh, a lot of riders, not my level, maybe higher up, are agents. Um, McQuaid is a big name, as so well, a big name in the UCI system, but his, um, his relative is, is also an agent, so there's a big link there for him getting riders on to big world tour teams. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, you, uh, you send, nowadays it's more like an Instagram direct message or you know message on Twitter or something like that. An email works as well, but it's a lot harder to get control of an email address because a lot of these things have social media managers um, and on the CV there's things like uh, your race results, power numbers, um, your ambitions for the next kind of two years because um, a lot of times we sign one year contract so if you tell them that we want to do five years and don't want to know about then I finished the junior tour Wales. Um, I went into like a bit of a black hole after it because I didn't know which direction to go into. Um, there wasn't like, as far as I was concerned, like if you won this race or if you were like top five, top ten, and you showed yourself, then people would knock on your door to, to sign you. But, um, but it wasn't like that at all. And it was only because um, my connection with Wild Cycling that they picked up on one rider leaving Rafa at the time to go back to the university. And there was a little gap there. Uh, and thankfully, I, I filled that gap. Um, so, like back in the age of 14, when you started, uh, what actually got you into the sport? Like, why so I think it was like football? Uh, it was football initially. Yeah, I played. <laughs> yeah, it was football initially. Um, the thing, the thing that appealed to me with the cycling is that it's very individual. I know it's a team sport in a sense, but like the preparation and the training and everything is, is very individual. And you know, even amongst me, so like, oh, I went out and did four hours yesterday. Oh, I went out and did four hours before. So um, I saw uh, Nicole Cook winning the Olympic gold in Beijing in 2008. Uh, and that was something that stood out because she, although she was kind of like the race favourite, she beat like Marianne Voss at the time, Emma Poole was in that race, there was lots of rivals, so yeah, really but she 
she won in like the most appalling conditions, like the typical Welsh weather, as we say, like it was pouring rain. And the sprint was like really long, and it, it kind of like it was one of those sprints where like it's, it's on a gradual uphill, and, and because the camera is like on the finish line, you can't really see who's in front. Of the and it captured my imagination because you, you, know, like, you never really knew who was going to come across that line first. And I thought you could probably go and chase that. Um, but the initial steps to get there were very like muddled. That was like, okay, I joined a cycling club, and then what do I do? Do I just like race? Do I, who, who's supposed to? Like, is there a scout system? Because like obviously coming from football, I was like, I was playing for Clare uh, in the academy, and I got dropped from the academy um, when I was like, 13 and 14. And um, to me, it was like, well, there, there is a, a perfectly laid out system if you want to progress. You play for songs, you play for money, you know, and all these things. So, still to this day, there isn't really anything like that in cycling, which is a little bit um, frustrating you know, for somebody who's brand new to the sport. But now sometimes sports are coming to find 10 year olds, aren't they? Yeah. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but they are. Yeah. yeah. That didn't happen to you, that's the thing. No. Yeah. Uh, the, I've, I've been asked a few times whether or not I regret, like, well, not regret, because it, I have nothing to do with it in a way. But, like, if I'd started cycling earlier, and you'd come up, like, through, I don't know, about how, how many of you started cycling when you were, like, under 10? Ironically, <coughs> didn't turn out much, but. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it's... in a way, I'm like, you know, I, I watch them. You see them in the Welsh like, League across the league. They're all like very capable riders, you know, that act like under 13 years of age. And I kind of miss all of that. And growing up in the area I grew up in, you know, Scott Davis. Home in GMs, you race on France, so obviously Scott rides for uh, Bahrain. Um, you know, all these riders kind of started really young. Um, and I kind of shimmied my way in in the early teenagers. And I could I could definitely tell, you know, when we were doing certain races, we went up to Belgium once with the Welsh uh, the Welsh junior team. And I had kind of a lot of catching up to do. Not so much in strength, but in just ability of like bike handling. Like, I'm still quite useless at bike handling today. Like I coming down the sense in big races, like, like on the back foot, and you, you realise like, especially if you race on the continent, a lot of riders have like, started riding when they're like ten or under, and they can you know go downhill with their eyes shut. Cycling. It's very much like your own I think that was like, like graph and book kids that yeah. result there. Yeah. And that's what yeah. made yeah. that switch yeah. for me like a lot yeah. easier. Because I could see like well if I if I go to this sport and I get like a lot of work then like, the results will surely come. Like, there's no there's no deal in that. But then it wasn't of course until like when I was on GLT we were racing like these bigger races that I realised there is like quite a bit of team on your board, and I'm not going to be like the one going to all the time. So, yeah, it was a learning curve. <laughs> the first year was a big learning curve. I think that, that first year in particular, so it was, um, as an 18 year old, I, when I finished the doing tour wheels, signed for yeah. Rafa then. Two months later, um, I flew to Australia and I remember the phone call with, with John Harrity. Um, I was standing outside because I was working in an office at the time, so I went outside to take the phone call. So John phoned me up and he said, um, a million dollar question, do you want to rock for us? Yeah, yeah, of course I do, yeah. He didn't even talk about money. But the money was like, too <laughs> But um he said, uh, we're going out to Australia for, for two months. Okay, yeah, really yeah, and that's all like a big training camp and we'll do a couple of races yeah. as well. I was like, I couldn't yeah. believe it. Like, I was 18 and I was going to get to go like halfway across the world. So it was the longest time I spent away from home. Like, it was two months. 
and got back at the end of February, straight into the British racing season, which is absolutely grim because you're going from like 40 degree weather to like, well, you're lucky to have 8 degrees. <laughs> but like, um, the end of March, early April, out to the Tour of Normandy, I finished the Tour of Normandy and I was the youngest rider there. I was 18, still 18 at that time. I think the next youngest rider was about 21. Um, struggled every day, and it was like those races where you know you haven't got no clothes on, there's crosswinds, and you're just like, you're just freezing every day basically. You're going as hard as you can, but you're still you're still freezing. And then um, I did the tour series, and ever since then, like it's been like the in joke, like riders doing the tour series, they like they specialise in the tour series. There's a reason why they do it. The rest of us like avoided like a plague. Like, we don't we don't want to, don't want to be involved in that. So um, I did that and that, that completely burnt me out. And I did it with like quite um quite a strong group of riders there, Clancy, James McCallum, Felix English, and uh, Christian House, and I was the fifth man. Um, until I started hill climbing, there was a team time trial that we did one of the rounds. And it was um, basically like two 90 second laps. Until I started hill climbing, it was the hardest three minutes of my life. I was trying to hang on to like, well, our tactic was, so instead of doing constant changes like we were doing a team time trial, we'd just do two changes. So Clancy and Christian would, would line up on the start line, bang, we'd go. And like, even that was hard, because like Clancy being a track rider, we were like halfway the road before we got off the line. And, um, we slotted in to, to place, and I was going to be the last man. And I thought, I'm going to be the last man because otherwise they'd shout at me for losing the wheel every time we came out of the corner. So we, um, we finished, it was finished like fourth team, I think, but I was, I was pretty impressed that we even got around the guys without crashing. Um, but that, my first year, that, that kind of ended my first year because I, I was actually fried after the tour series. And it either makes the season or breaks the season, people say. So, um, but the idea was that the, the development, so if I started cycling at like, I started competing at like 18, 17, 18 max, trying to keep that curve going as much as possible, that was the idea, and see if, or so much you could break, really, but like, if you've got this progression, just keep chipping away at it and see if you can get more. Yeah. The other six years are a bit of a blur. <laughs> You know, get up in the morning and physically I can't do it, but you have to. In a race or training? Um, I've never heard you complain. In the seven years we've been together, you've never once said to me, I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, um, I've that's genuinely that's never heard him complain. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even in our first year doing Normandy, <clears throat> you were on your knees, but you were like, I'm going to finish this. I hate it, but I'm going to finish it. I think in a rare situation, you've just got to... Um, what I was taught was, particularly if it's... Well, generally, it'd be a stage race, if you're thinking about that. And generally, like, the longer the race goes on, the more people kind of come down to your level and act it to a certain point. And it's just... It's really about like who's sleeping well enough, who's eating enough. Um, that's what it kind of boils down to. The mentality side of it, I mean, in training, you, what, I, what I think, for me, the way I've like framed it is, maybe you can do the same sometimes, but you, you think to yourself, I'm tired, like I don't want to do it today. A lot of these things will compound, so like if you think one, Generally speaking, you'll, you'll like another one will roll out, and you'll yeah, you'll think about them all the time.